Hello, everybody. Good morning and happy Wednesday. Happy morning of the full moon. Sushil, hello and good evening from India. Welcome, good evening to you as well. Feel free to hop in and say hello, everyone. Let us know where you're joining from. If today is your first time with me, my name is Jackie Mancuso. I do a whole bunch of stuff, um, but today we're here to talk about astrology. I'm going to pull one oracle card just to see how we can use the energy of this full moon. And then we're going to do a um, grounding meditation and an energy healing session today. Uh, and I'm joining you guys from Northern Illinois. So let's see. Jackie, nice to be here with y'all this Wednesday day. I love it. Cold moon Wednesday. Bonnie, that's interesting because, all right, so I'm like, astrology person, right? So anytime I think of the full moon, new moon, I think of like what sign is it in? And I don't know those. Um, I don't even know how to categorize those, but like the cold moon, the buck moon, the wolf moon, like I'm not too familiar with that. But last night, something came up on my internet feed and I saw the cold moon. And then that's actually part of what we're going to talk about today. So interesting that you brought that up. Tony, hello from Utah. Hello, Tony. Jody, hello from Wisconsin, my northern neighbor. Joy, listening from the car today. Beautiful. There's not going to be much visual today. There's going to be one oracle card and that's, that's it. So car is perfect. Cindy, good morning from Miami, Florida. Welcome, Cindy. I was in Miami once. When I was 16, that's actually where I got my first tattoo. When I was 16, I used a fake ID to get a tattoo. Um, but that was a lot of fun. I liked it down there. I don't know much about Miami. We stayed in like the family home for some, like during the day, and then we were just out at night. So beautiful beaches. Hello, T. Welcome. That's, that'd be a great oracle deck. Ooh, Tony, are you talking about like the, the names of the moons, the buck moon, the cold moon, all that? Because that would be a cool oracle deck. Uh, Christine, hello, Jackie, and tribe. No need for the air quotes, Christine. We are a tribe. <laughs> um, who else? Shay, hello, Jackie. Happy to be here. Welcome, Shay. Grand Rising from K. Cindy, yes, it's warm. I'm jealous. Actually, we have a nice little heat wave here this morning. Um, I think we're going to get up to about 45 degrees today. So for early December, that's pretty good for Northern Illinois. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, Carrie. Tony, yeah, awesome. Maybe uh, that'll be in the works. I would one day like to create Oracle decks. I have a friend who's a graphic designer, um, and she's my woo-woo person, so it's definitely, uh, it will happen. I like that, though. Bonnie, I'm standing in my daughter's room. Speak loudly, please. Crank your volume, Bonnie. Atta uh, connect a speaker. There you go. Good morning, Jackie. Tolkien, hello. Welcome, welcome. Jackie says, Bonnie, when you said painting, I thought you meant painting for fun on a canvas. T, you're going to be in the 80s today. Man, okay, maybe Louisiana is the place to be. My husband keeps talking about wanting to live on a bayou. He wants to um, raise our kids to wrestle gators. <laughs> so I'm okay with that if the opportunity comes, you know. Sharon, hello. Hello, everyone. And Jackie, Sharon, um, I will reply to your email at, later today, but it's a thumbs up. We, we, ha we have something to work with. That's what I'll say here. Uh, K, an oracle deck of tattoo images. All right, that was from Cindy. That's funny. You know, they have meanings. They can represent things. Kay's in the process of creating an oracle deck. That's so cool. Jane, good morning. Cindy, you're in the 80s today. It cooled down. Oh my goodness, that is like my dream. I wonder if there's a reason why I've lived for three decades in this cold Midwest state because I, it's not... It's not my cup of tea. And I, I like, I'm at that point where I don't feel like I need to learn how to appreciate the cold. Um, let's see, Carmina, I might be interested in the book Moods of the Ohio Moons. It discusses the moon and her Native American traditions by month. I love it. Okay, getting the photos and quotes together and figuring out how to get it. Yeah, one step at a time, Kay, that's awesome. That's awesome, it's in progress. 
Good morning, Violet. Jennifer, good morning. Second time here and love your energy. Well, thanks, Jennifer. I'm glad that you're joining us again. Jess, Houston is Bayou City. I did not know that. I lived in Chicago for a couple years and ultimately left because of the weather. Yeah, yeah. It's in my future. I know it's in my future. It's just not the right time, but that's okay, right? There's a reason why I'm here. So let's talk about the full moon today. So today's full moon is happening in Gemini. It's happening at 16 degrees of Gemini, and the moon will be full right around 10 o'clock central time. So however that um, translates into wherever you are, um, 10 o'clock central is when the moon will be at its most full. Good morning, Christine. Welcome, welcome. Cindy, yes, I have seasons, but I personally don't need seasons. <laughs> so when it comes to this full moon, it's always advisable to look at your astrology chart, look at your natal chart, and try to find where 16 degrees of Gemini falls. Um, Jackie, PM, 10 PM tonight, which, and Jackie, we're going to talk about that, um, that article you shared with me with the moon and Mars and all that stuff because it's all happening tonight. So that's cool. So if you do not have your natal chart memorized, <laughs> like no one does, um, you can look it up on the internet. You can literally just type in free natal chart, free birth chart. Uh, you can look at astro.com, um, cafeastrology.com. You just put in your date of birth, the town you were born, and then it's a bonus if you know that if you know the exact time that you were born, because that will set up the pie pieces of the chart, which are called the houses. So looking at your natal chart, finding the glyph on the outside for Gemini, it kind of looks like uh, <laughs> it's two sticks and then two sticks. I, my, I'm having a brain fart. It's like the pie symbol with a line on the bottom. So look for Gemini and then look right in the middle because each sign is comprised of 30 degrees. So we're looking for 16 degrees, Gemini. Looking to see if that is interacting with any of your natal placements. Um, this full moon is actually conjunct one of my natal placements, so I'm still digesting what all of that means. Um, conjunct means it's at the same degree. Uh, so looking to see if it's playing with any of your planets, if it's either conjunct right on top of one of your natal planets, if 16 degrees of Gemini might be opposite of one of your placements. So if you have something going on at 16 of Sagittarius, um, looking to see if there's any, usually the oppositions and the squares are the easiest to find because 180 degrees is straight across, 90 degrees is, you know, this way, however. So, um, or you can just look at what house 16 degrees of Gemini falls within your chart. That will give you um, a little bit of an insight into what area of your life is being illuminated today by the full moon. What area of your life is calling for an ending? Full moons represent endings. They represent closure. Full moons represent releasing, um, wrapping things up. This can be closing a chapter in your life, or it could be closing a whole damn book, um, depending on how strongly this full moon is resonating with you. And this can be honored. So honoring your ending by celebrating. Also, full moons are a time of celebration, celebrating everything that you've created in this area of your life. This is why I love looking at exactly where this is falling in my natal chart, because it makes the, the astro transit a little bit more personal, right? So celebrating what you've created, celebrating the lessons that you've learned in this area of your life. Um, and you can, you can look back over the last moon cycle. So you can either look back the last two weeks since the new moon, what have I created? What have I, what lessons have I learned? You can look back through the next, like the last full moon. So over the last month, you know, maybe there's been some shifts and changes in your life in the last month, or you can look back the whole year, you know, from last year's full moon in Gemini. What have I released from my life? How have I grown? You know, so celebrating these things that you, you, have created in your life, right? Because we create our own reality. Um, 
and then taking what you need from that and leaving the rest. That's where the release comes from with full moons. There's a lot of chats going on. I want to say hello to everyone coming in. Let's see. Violet, 11.08 p.m. in New York. I looked in my moonology diary. I'm excited. Gemini sun here, and it's in my fourth house. Beautiful, Violet. Yeah, the fourth house is all about, it's, it's the home. It's your retreat. It's the darkest, the lowest point of the chart. So it's your private life. It's how you replenish yourself. It's what you're like when you go away from the center stage. Jackie, you got a whole lot going on in Gemini. This could just be like like a washing over of that part of your chart, right? Um, Jennifer, I only have my IC in Gemini. What does this mean? It's the, it's similar to, I was just talking about the fourth house. The IC, I can't remember the full Latin word, ilium coeli or something, but that represents like the midnight point of your chart. It's the very base, um, like the hidden part of yourself. Um, yeah, your home, it could represent your origin, like your, your family of origin. Um, but yeah, this could be releasing, like, because Gemini is also mental. It's the, it's an air sign. So it could be releasing how you think about your private life. Just going back in the chat. Okay, Gemini is at 18 degrees in the 12th house. Sagittarius is 18 degrees in my 6th house. So I would consider that conjunct. I consider things to be conjunct when they are within 10 degrees of what is happening. So that would be anywhere from 6 to 26 degrees of Gemini. And then also when we have a full moon, that means that the moon is in Gemini and the sun is opposite in Sagittarius at 16 degrees. So looking at your Gemini house, looking at your Sagittarius house. Let's see who else. Good morning, Erica. Tolkien, Gemini here and the full moon in Gemini. I heard that it will affect Gemini greatly. I mean, yes, it, it's impacting your sun <laughs> at this point, right? Love the endings of what I have learned from relationships that are no longer in my best interest. Hello, Helen. Don says, what is Sa Saturn? What is Saturn? That looks, that's what looks to be in the house for the planet. 12th house Saturn in Gemini. Is that what you're talking about, Dawn? So Saturn is the planet of like responsibility and duty. So this could be, I mean, I would take a look at maybe the last year. Um, 12th house is the house of like spirituality, occultism, um, mysticism, kind of like detaching from reality. So how have you grown in your spiritual practice in the last year or month um, based on how much you have like set boundaries on yourself, like dedicated yourself to the time of learning all that. Gemini moon in the ninth house. There, there's there's too much. I, this is going to take up the whole session if I go through each of these. Um, there, So I will say that I do have a course on Insight Timer called Astrology 101. Oh, and Kay literally just said I haven't had a chance to go through your astrology course yet. Does it cover dif different aspects of the houses? Yes. So this Astrology 101 course, it's 13 days. Um, so there is a day for talking about the inner planets, the first five planets, and then there's a day talking about the outer planets, so like what they all represent. Um, there is a day talking about all of the houses, so what each house, 1 through 12, represents. There's a day talking about trans or um, aspects, so what it means when something is conjunct. What does it mean when something is square? What does it mean when something is opposite? Um, so definitely by taking this course, you'll be able to look at your natal chart. So my goal for creating the course was to allow you to look at your own natal chart and see what is happening in the sky right now and how it directly impacts your self, right? 
And thank you, Helen, for the reminder. Um, for the last two weeks of December, I'm offering 50% off of all of my services. So I do um, astrology chart readings. So if you'd like me to look at your chart and sit with you for 30 or 60 minutes describing what's going on in your natal chart, um, you can check out my website, which is linked in my Insight Timer bio. Uh, lakesidelivinghealer.com. And then, yeah, also 50% off of all my services from December 19th through the 30th. So check that out. But let's keep talking about the full moon. So uh, full moon endings, releasing, but celebrating, right? Honoring why you are making this ending. Bonnie earlier was talking about the cold moon. This is the longest full moon of the year. This is the last full moon of 2022. So this is a good time of purging this whole year. <laughs> this has been the last three years, man, like what the F? <laughs> um, what is reality at this point? Um, but this year especially has been, there's been this Saturn Uranus square going on for the last three years and we're walking away from that. So it's been this tension between Saturn, the past, rules, boundaries, regulations, holding back. So tension between that father energy and Uranus, who is the, the rebel, the free thinker, the innovator, the one who wants to do new things. So it's been tension between freedom and con freedom and control. Um, so yeah, take tonight to just release all of that energy, right? Shake it off. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is the longest full moon of the year. It's the darkest full moon that we're going to have. And I did look ahead. January 6th is our next full moon, and that's technically further away from the solstice than today. So um, how this might represent this full moon is it might take a while to release, right? We have all of this time tonight. We have all of this darkness. So this might be a prolonged ending this might be representative of something that might you know it's, it's not just gonna like poof it's gone it might take some time to leave so this might be um it might be a good idea tonight if you can or someday in the next two three nights to set yourself up to perform a little ritual of release allowing time to process through emotions of release, to process through the emotions of an ending. Um, and there's no right or wrong way to set this up for yourself. This could look like a journaling session, like setting yourself up to have no distractions for 20 minutes, you know, or longer if you have the time, um, but just to fully immerse yourself in processing through what it's like to let go of what you want to let go of. Um, it just hit me right now that might be a reason why if there's something in your life that you've been trying to get off and it just see, it won't seem to leave this could be a thought pattern this could be a relationship this could be you know a situation in your life um, if you're ready to let it go it might just be that you haven't honored the role that it has played in your life and given it the time to process in order to leave right so this um Oh, I like that, Bonnie. Thank you. Bonnie put a meditation in our spiritual community. That's at 10 o'clock tonight. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, so this having this prolonged darkness tonight could be a great time to let it all go. And so th this full moon is in Gemini, and you can always look to the planet that rules the full moon. So Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So what you can do is look at the chart of the moment and look to see where Mercury is while this full moon is happening. Mercury just moved into Capricorn, right? So Mercury has to do with our thoughts, our ideas, um, and Capricorn is an earth sign. So this is giving us a little bit of less of a chance to get swept away in emotions. Our, it's keeping us grounded at this time. So this could be a good time to address these emotions because you have the support of Mercury and Capricorn to not get swept up and swept away and overwhelmed and all of that stuff. What we have not talked about yet about this full moon that is playing a large part today, the full moon is conjunct Mars retrograde. They're both at 16 degrees. So they're not exactly conjunct when the full moon happens. Um, they're a few minutes apart, but 16 degrees, Mars retrograde, and the moon 
boom, right there. So Mars retrograde also invites us to slow down our energy. Retrograde is reviewing our past Mars actions. So reviewing our past actions. Some things may be illuminated by this full moon, right? Some shadow sides of our past actions might be brought to light by this full moon right there next to Mars. Um, if you actually look up at the sky tonight when it gets dark, you'll be able to see, obviously, the moon if it's clear. Um, and then in most parts of the world, I don't know. I've never really left the Midwest, so I don't know how this works. But uh, in most parts of the world, you're supposed to also be able to see Mars. So what I thought was interesting is that the moon's going to be in the, in the sky and Mars will be in the sky. And as the moon rises, it's going to cover Mars for a moment and then keep going and, and reveal him again. So I was sitting with that for a moment and thinking, like, what could this mean? The full moon usually results in heightened emotions, right? It causes us to be lunatics. It's pulling on the waters of our body, right? Uh, water, emotion, yeah, tides and all that stuff. So during full moons, this can amplify shadow sides of signs, okay? So the, the shadow sign of, shadow side of Mars is anger. So also, watch for yourself today to see if you might have a lot of anger coming up, right? However, with this pattern of the moon coming to block Mars and then reveal it again, this might be the light of the moon inviting us to choose light over our anger, right? So it might, it, to me, it feels like a visual invitation to choose your light body over primal anger, right? Um, and one last thing about this full moon, and then we'll pull a card. One of my favorite astrologers, his name is Brian Coulter. I am going to put it in the chat. Um, he does full moon and new moon updates on YouTube, and then he, he ends them with a meditation. So his meditation for this full moon has a lot to do with confronting your anger and working with your anger in order to turn it into a higher expression. So that's all I'm going to say. Watch his most recent video if that interests you. Um, but the meditation is about it. And it, you know, it's not like a, a scary meditation, but it's a way of confronting a most recent time that you've experienced anger and just let, allowing yourself to evolve it to a higher sense. So that might be a good meditation to do tonight as well. All right. I don't use this deck often, but how could I not use the Moonology Manifestation deck today? So um, if you have been hanging out with me and you missed last week, just to clue you in, um, I'm separating my time a little bit. I have found myself dedicating more time than I have to Insight Timer. Um, so I'm splitting my session. So today we are just going to do one Oracle card and then some energy healing at the end. Um, my goal is to keep this under an hour. I am working on honoring my time and your time as well, right? I've had teachers on Insight Timer that I liked them because they were always done at the same time, but then they got excited and they would go and go and go. And yeah, so um, feel free to send your energy into this deck. And what question should we ask? Let's just ask what we need to know about this full moon. Like what, what will help us to have the most efficient release? Um, the release that will serve our highest good. What do we need to know about that? Jackie, thank you very kindly for your donation. If you guys are enjoying today's session, you, um, are always welcome to offer donations. They're always greatly appreciated. Never expected. I'm glad the dogs are barking now and not during the meditation. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, if you would like to work one-on-one -on -one with me, um, 10 o'clock, oh, sorry, 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 Helen. I was gonna answer for Bonnie, but Bonnie is Eastern. 
If you'd like to work one-on-one with me, especially these last two weeks of December where everything is half off, you can find my personal website on my Insight Timer profile. While you're there, you can join our spiritual community. It is where I... It's, um, I post updates of these oracle readings, and um, it's also a place for us to share and gather and be a tribe, be a community, just like Bonnie's sharing a meditation for tonight. Two cards came out. I was only looking for one, but this feels right, so I'm going to read both cards. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what this means, you know? I was going to try to assign a position to each, each one, but we'll just, we'll just flow with it. We'll just go with it. So we asked for a hint at how to most effectively use this full moon for our highest good. So the first card that came up is the new moon in Capricorn. The message is to step up and lead. Mm, Capricorn energy is interesting because Mercury just moved into Capricorn yesterday. Venus is moving into Capricorn tomorrow. And then in two weeks, we have the solstice, which is going to be the sun moving into Capricorn. Um, Anna, please. Everything half off with you or all insight timer? It's just me. It's my personal Jackie Mancuso sale um, off of, like, on through my, my website. So, new moon in Capricorn energy. The good news is that you know what you want, and on some level, you know how to get it. Step up and know that you are the boss of your own life. A new, more disciplined approach is needed, or a new plan or strategy is called for. This card reminds you that ambition isn't a dirty word. Whatever you want to create in your life. There's no such thing as too big of a goal, but break your plans into smaller, achievable pieces. Slow and steady wins the race. Release any blocks to success. The uh, There's an affirmation for this card, so if this is resonating with you. The harder I work, the luckier I get. The harder I work, the luckier I get. Feeling a lot of Saturn energy with this card. So if this full moon is dancing around with your natal Saturn, this might be for you. Um, But I'm curious to see how it relates to the second card that came out. Which is interesting. Um, It's not a full moon card, however. It is the last quarter moon in Gemini. So we have Gemini energy coming out. So it seems like our guides want us to work with Capricorn beginnings and almost endings of Gemini. Let's see what it says. Clear your mind. Fretting is a sweet sounding word for feeling anxious. Drawing this card suggests that you or someone close to you is fretting. As you already know, this won't help you to move closer to your goals, as it means you are directing thoughts and energy into what you don't want rather than what you do want. Deliberately manifesting a goal comes from a happy place where you feel good. So focus on making a list of your concerns and then talk them through to clear your mind. This is far more likely to bring good results. And let's see the affirmation for this card. Loving others flows naturally when I love and accept myself. Something came as I was reading and let me... Thank you. I like that, Carmina. Yeah, the super new moon in Capricorn occurs on December 23rd. So it looks as if, like, these cards are preparing us for something. Oh, and it's right there. It's on the tip of my tongue. I'm also, I'm fretting because this is a different flow for me. So I'm, like, watching the time to make sure that I get out of here on time. I'm trying to let this flow. So just just letting you know what's going on. 
Um, new moon in Capricorn, last quarter moon in Gemini. So this second card is really just telling us, don't focus on what it is that you don't want, right? Focus on what it is that you do want. Here we go. So this, now it's, now it's back, it's back. Full moon in Gemini, right? This is a time to release Gemini thoughts, ideas about your life in order to step forward and to create. So it's almost as if our guides know that this specific moon is going to help us release whatever we need to release in order to start creating in two weeks, right? Two weeks and two days when we have that new moon in Capricorn, which is actually coming up. So this is a very mental message. It's, it's as if we need to literally get out of our minds, like get out of our own way, if we want to create the life that we desire. I'm also feeling the energy that there's something, whatever it is that you feel is holding you back from creating whatever it is that you desire. It's all in your head. It's literally all in your head. If you are um, a tarot person, the Eight of Swords just came to me, right? You, you are the one holding yourself back. And right now it's specifically just a thought about something. So, I mean, I invite you to challenge your thoughts, right? Anytime you have a thought, ask yourself, is this true? Is this actually factually true? Or is this an emotional thought that I'm having? Get into the vortex, Kay. I love it. Jackie, love to watch your downloads, Jackie. <laughs> I'm sure it's interesting. I never rewatch these videos. I just throw them up on YouTube like, yeah, sure, they're there. That's funny. Helen, she's so good at these downloads, isn't she, Jackie? It's practice. It's practice. Tolkien says, yes, indeed. Carmina, what do you suggest when one doesn't know what one wants? That's a really good question. That's a wonderful question because I know I've been there and I'm sure lots of people have been there. Jennifer says that's a good question. So what do you suggest when one doesn't know what one wants? I don't know what I want. I feel like I'm, I want more context, um, but what's coming to mind is if you don't know what you want, I'm guessing that you know a lot about what you don't want right so you can start there um, and you can if I don't want XYZ what's the opposite of XYZ that's what's coming up for me right now um, or what you can do is what I usually turn to is the practice of gratitude writing down everything that you do have that you are grateful for um, and allow yourself to feel into that gratitude. So what might also happen as you're listing everything in your life that you appreciate, everything that you love, um, two things might happen. That might allow you to see a pattern in yourself to understand what you do value, to understand what does bring you peace. Or by practicing that gratitude and by sitting with that feeling of gratefulness, you might realize that you don't want anything. You might realize that you have everything that you want, you just haven't recognized it yet. Because, here we go, I'm lighting my incense to talk about this one. Uh, <laughs> who says that we need to want things? I'm not a fan of the society that we've been indoctrinated through our whole lives, right? It, why do we have to want something? It's because people want to sell stuff to us. You know, it's okay to be completely content with what you have. Um, I feel like that practice has kind of been stripped away from our uh, like autopilot mode. Like it's not second nature for people to count your blessings, right? That's what my sign says back there. Count your blessings. It's not second nature for people to do that anymore because we're all, we're like programmed with this, like, what do we need next? What is the next thing that I need? Um, if I'm not feeling happy right now, there might be a, a book out there that will fix my life or there might be you know like a thing I can purchase to fix my life like a lot of it if you just sit with yourself 
and start appreciating everything you have, like you realize that you don't really need much else. You know, what? who is it? Pavlov's basic needs? Heart, I might be making that up, I don't know. I used to be, well, I, I still am a teacher, but there's a lot of those like things that I learned and I, they all blend together, it doesn't matter, but there's the hierarchy of needs. Um, do you have shelter? Do you have food and water? Do you have love in your life, right? Um, that doesn't necessarily have to mean a romantic partner. Do you have family that loves you? Yes or no? Maybe it's a no. Do you have some friends that love you? Yes or no? <laughs> if not, you can always come here to our spiritual community because we have lots of love to share. Um, but once you meet those basic needs, everything else is just bonus. Uh, and while I'm on this, I was thinking of a way to bring this up because things happen in my personal life and I'm like, man, this is a great lesson for Insight Timer, but it has nothing to do with the astrology, so how am I going to get it in there? Um, manifestation came up in my life the other day. One of my distant friends posted about manifestation. Why is it that I am practicing this technique of manifestation, but it appears that the opposite is happening? My response to that was that manifestation doesn't work in the way where it just drops what you ask for in your life. No, no, no. That would be too easy. You wouldn't learn anything from that. Maslow, thank you guys. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, when you practice manifestation, when you ask for things, when you intend to bring things into your life, what you will be presented with most of the time are lessons perhaps hardships of, they're like opportunities for you to grow yourself in order to bring those things into your life, in order to create those things for yourself. So if, I'm just going to be blunt, if you're sitting here every day closing your eyes manifesting $100,000, there's a really, really, really small chance that a $100,000 check is going to show up in your mailbox. Oof. As optimistic as I am and as like bubbly and, and happy, look go lucky, positive as I am, like that was hard to say, but it's true. You know, there's there's a very, very small chance that that's gonna show up in your mailbox. However, you might be presented with you might see a YouTube video that someone's talking about how they used their XYZ skills to start creating money. And then that's going to spark something in you. Oh, I have those skills and I also have different skills. So maybe I can start creating my own wealth instead of waiting for this company to pay me. You know, it, it things like that. Things like that. So I don't remember how we got on that topic. Um, I would like to have a very nice grounding meditation and energy healings. Um, I'm going to just flip through these comments real quick and see if anything jumps out. However, feel free to start getting comfortable. Find a seat or lie down. Some book recommendations. Carmina, true, but I still need to make enough of a living to eat, and I'm so tired of settling for work that I... Um, oh, I lost it. Oh. So tired of settling for work that I despise, but I can't figure out what work would be fulfilling. I recommend journaling on this exact question. If... If money didn't matter, what would you do with your time? And sit with that. Try to remember to not focus on what you don't want. Change your focus to what you are grateful for, what you do have. I know where you're coming from, Carmina. I quit my career on a whim, a whim, <laughs> And I started this energy healing business and my, you know, my salary was cut in half. I've still to this day, it's still like, well, I don't know, am I going to make this month? Am I going to make this month? And that's okay. I'm choosing not to focus on the lack. I'm choosing to keep positive and keep looking at like, wow, I'm so grateful that this happened. I'm so grateful that I have this. I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity. It's, it's all a mindset. 
Oh, Helen, it was absolute intuition. Yeah. When I say a whim, I mean like it just happened. I had been thinking about it. I got an email that I was like, nope, I'm done. Boom. I quit my career through an email. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and I was like, all right, this is what we have to do now. Sometimes, um, like hitting rock bottom is what we need. Sometimes Saturn needs to just slap us across the face, put us at rock bottom and help us realize that the only place to go right now is up so we can, we are the ones that create what is ahead. Yeah, Carmina, you got it. You got it. Doug, mad respect quitting like that. I'm a, I'm a rather impulseful person. In, is that a word? Impulse? Impulsive. <laughs> um, but I, I'm never afraid because I, ha I, ch I choose to have this attitude about life. You choose your attitude. You know, I used to be a little brat back in the day. I used to hate everything and my life sucked. <laughs> and then when I started to realize, you know, I kept hearing it from all over. I kept realizing that if I choose to look at the good, then I'm choosing to have a good life is what it comes from, right? There's good and bad everywhere. It's not that I'm like blinding myself to the bad. I recognize it. I'm just not allowing myself to get pulled in by it. You know, I understand that I have bills. I understand that I have a mortgage. I understand that, you know, like if I don't book a certain amount of clients, I'm not going to have this money. I get that, but it, it just is. It, it isn't something that's worthy of me spending my energy on. It's not that my brain doesn't have space for that worry because worry gets you nowhere. <sighs> Thank you, Helen. She says Jackie is the poster child for jump and you can fly. The fool, Uranus, go, just blah. <laughs> Let's bring our attention into our bodies. I'll transmit some healing energy and then we can wrap this up and say goodbye. So allowing your eyes to float closed as you take a few deep breaths, settling into this space. And what I would recommend Right now, we don't normally do this, but we have lots of Gemini energy. We were just in this conversation. I want you to imagine all of the thought bubbles within your mind, seeing them in front of your face, in front of your vision, or sensing them within your mind, whatever feels best for you, just making these thought bubbles real to you. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine these thought bubbles exiting through your nostrils and just leaving your mouth. If you're breathing out of your mouth, whatever, whatever feels more comfortable, but just exhale these thought bubbles out of your face. Knowing that if they are important thoughts, they will come back when they're needed. But for now, we're here to relax. We're here to meditate. We're here to ground into our bodies. Exhaling every thought of the external world. <sighs> Exhaling every thought of your situation, of your circumstance. Just letting it go for these few minutes. Allowing yourself to just be. There is nowhere else to be. There is nothing else you need to do at this time. And once you have expelled all of these thoughts from your being, let's bring all of our awareness to the contact points that we have with the surface beneath us. Spending some time with the physical body, observing how it's resting upon Mother Earth, and feeling her full support. her effortless love. And 
bringing all of your awareness now directly above the crown of your head in an egg-shaped white orb of light. Perhaps today this represents the full moon to you. But bringing all of your awareness outside of your physical body. Detaching just for a moment. Viewing life from your eagle's perch. Now acting as the curious observer as this egg of awareness cracks on the crown of your head, flowing your awareness down the back of your head, down the temples, the ears, down the forehead, eyebrows, eyelids, and eyelashes, dripping off the tip of your nose, flowing down your cheeks, Stripping off the lips, the chin, and the jaw. Flowing the awareness down all sides of your neck. Draping over the shoulders. Flowing down the upper arms. past the elbows, down the forearms, past the wrists, the hands, and each finger. I was getting so into that meditation and something told me to open my eyes. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure out. It's been a few minutes. Are you guys able to hear me now? Last we heard was a thought bubbles. All right, thank you, Sarissa. We were gifted with a moment of silence. Let's just do a quick, quick grounding. We'll root down. We'll let those thought bubbles go. We're back. There is no worry. There is no rush. We have 10 minutes. So continue to exhale those thought bubbles. No situation is permanent. Just let them go. And what we're going to do today is just imagine the full moon above the crown of your head. Imagine this moon illuminating all parts of your body coming from the crown of your head, down the head and face, down the shoulders and arms, through the chest and upper back, the belly and lower back, surrounding the hips and the pelvic area, down the upper legs, 
lower legs out to your feet. And just taking a few deep breaths, feeling the light of the moon illuminating every square inch of your body. Today, we're going to act as a conduit, yes. Let's imagine roots growing down from every contact point that your body has with the surface beneath you. Imagine roots growing down into Mother Earth. But these roots are carrying that light of the moon. Watching as these roots dig deeper and dig wider. Firmly grounding the energy of the moon down into Mother Earth. And perhaps feeling the energies blending within yourself, feeling the energies of the full moon coming from above, blending with the energies of Mother Earth coming up from below. calling in your guides and angels for any assistance they may have to offer at this time. Allowing the energy to be received by intending to completely surrender to this healing energy as it nourishes your highest good. And bringing your attention back inside of your body, noticing anything that may rise to the surface as I keep track of the time. slowly beginning to bring some movement back to your body. Wiggling the fingers and toes, rolling out the wrists and ankles, stretching out the body however it's calling you to. And 
And perhaps bringing the palms of your hands together, rubbing them back and forth, creating friction and creating heat. Cupping the warm palms over your eyes as you begin to blink your eyes open, allowing the light to peek in through the cracks as you slowly bring yourself back to your physical body. Thank you so much for joining me today. Love to all. Namaste. Thank you everyone for your patience and your understanding and for sticking around with our technical opportunities. Hello Gary, I'm doing wonderful. Nice to see you. How are you? Christine, thank you for your donation and everyone else who has um, donated. I much appreciate it. Namaste Erica. Thank you Jennifer. I want you to know that the energy that came through today was, how do I say this? So I I'm sending love and healing to you all, right? And what I was observing from the energy of you is that you're like holding up this umbrella. So I saw it, at, and this is each and every one of you. I don't know who specifically it was, but it was just the energy of this is the group that I'm sending to. So I was imagining that like love <laughs> was raining down over you, but you're standing there with your umbrella looking at this rain. Like, I don't want rain right now. And you're protecting yourself from it. So the message that I was receiving was that there are so many blessings around you. You are literally surrounded with love. It is raining onto you. But for some reason, you think it's bad. You think you need to protect yourself from it. Love in a general sense, right? I don't know what it is that's actually raining down on you, but it, it, I was getting this energy that, that you, you have convinced yourself that this is something that you need to protect yourself from. It's there, you want it, but it's almost as if, yeah, realizing that things aren't good or bad, you know? Like, if you just step out into the rainstorm, sure, you might get wet, big deal, but then you're going to be showered with love. So that's what came through. I hope that that means something for you. Um... Thank you all for the donations. Thank you for uh, being here with me. If you haven't followed me yet on Insight Timer, consider doing so. I'll be back on Friday to talk about Venus moving into Capricorn. We'll do a full oracle reading on Friday. Um, it came across also, or it came up also. Um, so I've been talking about this women's retreat for some time. I'm hosting a women's retreat at the end of March in Jamestown, Kentucky. This is an Aquarius-based retreat, so everyone who comes is just asked to bring a small gift or service to share um, so that we all just do a little bit of work and we receive lots of love and healing. So um, I, t I talk about this a lot and I'm wondering if some of you guys are in this state of mind like, well, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what part I can play, you know? Um, I've noticed that just in general comparison, right? Like you come here and you you watch me read oracle cards and have downloads and all this stuff. And like, sometimes it can get in people's head like, well, I can't do that. Um, if there is that desire in you, like I want to be a part of this retreat, but I don't know what it is I can bring, reach out to me, we'll figure something out. Um, because there is a place for everyone. Everyone does have a unique talent and gift to share with this world, right? Helen says, bring yourself in your gift will be revealed, I promise. Yeah, so that's it. I just wanted to say that out loud because I had a an inkling that that might be on some of your minds. However, we are just hitting one hour and I am practicing honoring time. So at this time, I will be departing. 
Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Thank you for the wonderful conversation that we had. I wish you the best on this full moon. Saying the background music is from Meditative Mind. It's a YouTube channel. This one is called Cleanse Your Mind. So if you'd like to find it. Meditative Mind, Cleanse Your Mind. All right, everybody. Love to all. Namaste. I will see you Friday, bright and early. Enjoy your release.